great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B. This is Tech Guy from the Hive. And we're excited to be back with you today on a very special video edition. Uh, we asked y'all a couple weeks ago if you might want to see a studio tour. See a hive tour. A hive tour. A hive tour. In the hive. So that's what we're going to do for you today. We're going to walk you all around our room show you uh, all the ins and outs and organization and all the things. It's going to be super fun. And, oh, we yeah. think so. We're going we're gonna to have fun with it. Yeah, I think so. Um, so our room, I'm very super, super duper blessed to have a 20 by 20 room um, in our house. Uh, I, we live in the house that I grew up in. And my parents, when I was in like middle school-ish, which I won't tell you what year that was, um, added on two 20 by 20 rooms. So it's this one and then one directly above this one and a little 10 by 10 breakfast nook. And uh, I get to have this as my studio, which is phenomenal. Uh, a few weeks ago, somebody asked us, what is it that you do for a business? Like what makes YouTube a business? And I think that's a phenomenal question. question. And I think as we walk around and kind of look at our organization and things, you'll kind of see what that means and all the things that we do. So this is our room. You can kind of see the majority of it. Uh, uh, there's lots of stuff this way that you haven't seen yet. Yep. Uh, so None of this is anywhere that we typically film. Uh, where we film is right next to us, so we'll get to that. that um, let's see, what else? I have several hobbies, and so you'll see lots of different organization. I try and like zone things. So like Very much all so. my Cricut stuff is in like this zone. All of our electronic stuff for the business is in this zone. Uh, all my planner stuff is in that zone, whatever. You'll kind of see as we go along in the tour. Um, if you have questions or if you need me to explain anything a little bit deeper, then comment down below and we'll continue um, the conversation. We will continue the conversation. It's one of my favorite things is to read y'all's comments and interact with you guys down there. It just makes uh, us be able to connect with our subscribers oh, more. Level. So um, our kids are awake. It's the middle of the day. They're playing as usual. So as you have already heard, uh, I'm sure you will hear more of them in the background. We, uh, we're just going to do that. So anything else? No. So yeah. a lot, a lot, we kind of go through seasons of, uh, we go through seasons while the world goes through seasons. So we do a lot of, uh, relaxing in here when it's summertime, uh, during this time right now and in the winter time here in the Midwest. Uh, we're in our living room stitching and yep. we've got our uh, we've got our setup yep. on point. So this is an add-on and then there's this room exactly upstairs that is like a guest suite. So we have multiple beds up there so we can have stitchy friends come and stay with us. We've had Jen and Brandon so far, which actually they didn't even stay upstairs. They stayed in our guest bedroom downstairs. When it was a guest bedroom. Um, and then um, Pam and Steph have come. So we just have like friends come and stay stitch yeah, come and go come and go quilting like friends B &B. stitching friends uh yeah and so this exact room is upstairs and it's a nice guest suite we have a couple of beds up there and so um this is kind of like my wing well there's no central heat or central air and so it gets quite cold and quite hot in here so um you might see like a floor heater somewhere oh, right there <laughs> because it gets frigidly cold in here because it is tile flooring so disclaimer as we walk through you're gonna see dust you're gonna see uh holes in the wall this room is extremely loved, loved. <laughs> and this used to be our living room so there are holes in the wall from like when i had decorations in mm -hmm. here to be a living room right. so pardon the walls pardon the grunge of we keep just it, we keep it real life yeah like, it's kind of when i when we yeah. do it well, we kind of looked through around and we're like, all oh, right, yeah, it looks great. And we get yeah. a couple of footages or film and we're like, hmm, disclaimer. Yeah. So disclaimer, you're going to see our dust and I apologize for that. Uh, but. Who doesn't have it? Yeah, really. Everyone, everyone has it. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. It is what so, it is. Anyway. All right. Well, let's get started and um, show you what we've got. Enjoy. So our very first thing is actually kind of special. This is a cabinet we spent $100 on at Target, which at the time was like, it's still quite a bit of money. Uh, but I didn't have a studio or craft room or anything. We lived in a very small three-story condo. 
uh, the third story, I mean, the bottom story was a garage and just a little uh, kind of den room. And I didn't have any room for any of my craft stuff. It was shoved in a closet. And that's when I was like dreaming of what Kia B could look like. And like just one day owning a quilting cross stitch business, like at that time it was just quilting because cross stitch is just my hobby. But we bought this and my sewing machine fit on one shelf, fabric was all on here. And then the cabinet part was just all the rubbish you don't want anybody to see that's super unorganized. And I loved that at that time, this was like my entire studio. And now it's a piece that's in my studio. Um, it's a part of it. And I just love that. I love, um, it's like very physical representation of where we've come from and how much uh, we've grown as a business. So I will show you what's in this, the very bottom where the cabinets are. If you have seen our... Um, scrap organization video. I was inspired by Lori Holt and her scrappy project planner. She talks about how she breaks up her scraps and I did that as well. And yes, those Sterilite bins are quite small, but I do a lot of projects with scraps. Um, everything I do, basically I start with scraps and I fill in if I need to uh, with larger pieces of fabric. So there's that. This is an old beverage dispenser that holds all of my threads. And, um, I don't know, it just, it's a beehive and it's super cute. And then we've got some office paper and needle minders. We sell those for my mom. She makes them and we sell them. Then this next shelf is all mostly patterns. So I've got Missouri Star quilt block books that I've been getting for quite some time. And then I've got a binder. This is all free PDF patterns that you can find online. I print them out and put them in cheap protectors. If I have a larger project that has several pages to the pattern, I will print it out, put the project on the outside in one of these little half inch binders and kind of store that here so that it is protected while I'm using it. This is stickers for planner stuff and things. These two are patterns. There's a lot of vintage patterns in there as well for quilting. And this one is hand lettering uh, with pens and markers and things like that, that and worksheets that I can practice hand lettering. I told y'all I have a bunch of different hobbies. Uh, these little small bins here, one of them is zippers. The other one is small quilt projects. Like if I have a ruler snap, um, like little coin bag that I want to make, it's in there. Or if I have, um, gosh, I think there's an Apple Watch parts in there to make an Apple Watch band out of fabric. Once I figure out how to do that, um, just small little quilting projects go in there. This is all planner stuff. You guys have seen a lot of this stuff before. Um, it is my daily planner, notebooks, things like that. These are all tabs and stickers and paper clips and things for that. Then up at the top, we have a lot of like cute little knickknacks, but these milk jars are all full of like just those office supply things that you would keep on your desk. Uh, so one, like this one has push pins in it. One of them has paper clips, rubber bands, things like that. We've got the letters for our letter board. This is a video we made that is um, turning a old teacup into a pin cushion. So we've got that. That is this bin right here is the Lori Holt Scrappy Project Planner that I talked about. Um, and it's all the stuff in it that you need to do that. And then I've just got an old uh, inspired uh, vintage um, planner. Could not think of the word. Then at the very top, one of the things I love to collect is old sewing machines and tomato pin cushions. So uh, several of those tomato pin cushions are my great grandmother's sewing room. When she passed away, I got to bring those home. And then there are pieces and parts to those old sewing machines. In the middle there, that is a sewing machine toy that actually works with a needle and everything. And then you can see the tulip that um, Stephanie got me from Holland. Then that's just, uh, just a fun premier sewing machine and old spools of thread. One of my hobbies that I don't ever really get to talk about is my love of Shirley Temple and I have some breakfast bowls and milk glasses to um that have Shirley Temple on them and then some old uh some of her children's books and a Shirley Temple original 
doll and her hair is still in a net and I am telling you I have no plans to take her hair out of that net at all. Uh, this is a ruler shelf from Ikea uh, that I got several years ago and it has just all my rulers and did I say ruler shelf? I mean picture frame shelf. I keep all my rulers and smaller uh, cutting mats on here which is really nice and helpful. Then on this one, I keep patterns that I'm currently working on. So, you know, I keep the spelling bee book here because I'm, I've am i always got those letters going on some type of project. This is a free pattern I uh, designed for keepsakes. And then I've just got some um, cake mix and cupcake mix uh, foundation paper piecing um, paper there. Then right here, this is our file box of... Um, cross stitch patterns. Everything that is not kitted or is not currently being used is stored in here. Uh, if you saw my planner like this, my Stitchcom planner, I used this in 2019. I had actually arranged everything to have categories. And so each category has a file folder here. So I can go into the spring one and find all of my spring patterns that I have collected. And that way it just kind of, it's like a simple organizational thing. I think I bought this filing cabinet. It's a Nate Berkus. I bought it at Target for maybe $20 or so. And then the file folders just go into it from there. This is a very well-loved laundry basket. Uh, when I got it, it looked like this. I've tried to clean it up and the top just is not cleaning at all. So in here is our... Q-snaps that we're not currently using. Tech Guy is a super big Q-snap guy. And then project boards that um, we should probably use more often. When I'm quilting, I like to use them a lot to uh, hold my blocks together. Okay, let's see if we can switch over here. Now, this wall will look a little more familiar to you guys because this is where we film. Um, but this is also where our desks go. So we've got quite a big space here. Um, what you're currently looking at is uh, my desk is here with, obviously with the sewing machine on it and has my sewing machine. It has my current planners that I am working in. That is a board, a picture frame that Tech Guy made for us for all of our DMC to go on to and um, which is like super sweet and nice. Then those are current um, planners that I'm working in. One of them is my personal planner and one is cross stitch and one is quilting. Uh, that create sign, I love that. One of my students from our homeschool group uh, had that made for me for Christmas this year and I love it. These um, little like waist bin looking things have quilt tops in them that just are waiting to be quilted. Then this is my, this was my mania wall. Uh, so any mania projects that I have uh, are in those bins. Um, I've since gotten rid of quite a few of our mania projects. So this is just a mail sorter that I use to sort out groups of cross stitch patterns. So this is all Glitter Village in one. This is all uh, the Cottage of the Month from Country Cottage Uniworks. This is all of the Santa's Village and all of the hometown holidays. The one, the reason this one is up here by itself is because we have a double of it. And that just lives right there. So it's easy to find. Uh, these, my mom had these made for me. If you all are an original, an OG Kia B fan, you will remember my top knot that I had uh, quite, quite often in videos. And that's when Tech Guy still had hair. So my mom had those made for my birthday a few years ago. Uh, those are binding babies. It has some two and a half inch binding wound around it. That is, um, it can go on top of your sewing machine. And so as you're binding your project, this just rolls off of that. This brick is pretty special. As I talked about in our floss tube this last week, uh, Tech Guy and I have known each other since we were seven. And that brick is from our middle school that they unfortunately tore down. So that is that. And then this is Tech Guy's desk. Obviously, it has a computer on it. Uh, and then I've got, this is um, a free pattern that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. I know we get a lot of questions on this. It is the either the Jelly Roll Jam or Jelly Roll Jam 2. And then um, 
we just have some like super easy sashing just kind of hanging in here. This is the first uh, tutorial that we ever posted on our channel, which is super special. I did not give you any of the measurements or anything. It was, it was uh, basically starting from this is how we are going to sew it, tips and tricks, uh, assuming that you already have the pattern. If you come down the wall, this is where I keep all of our receipts for the year. Um, I actually do keep them. <laughs> And then the front of it is metal, and so I keep all of our needle minders on there and the backs to them. And that's super helpful because then they're not getting lost and all the things. We actually, our little guy has a uh, programmable shunt in his head that magnets can change that. And so it's really super important that we keep everything magnetic together so that, and it's out of reach of him, so it doesn't mess with his head at all. So, um, this thing that separates our desk is a Kalex unit from Ikea, and I'll just kind of quickly walk you through what is in this. Um, let's see, this top one is basically all of our tech for Kia B, except for filming stuff. So that's chargers for everything. It's my iPad, my Apple Watch, those things, everything that we use for Kia B. This one down here is all scrapbook paper and Project Life things. I don't actually do Project Life, but I like to use their cards and things for my planners and stuff like that. That's where I get a lot of my cute cards. So basically this whole thing is paper crafting of some sort. So I've got a sticker maker down there, a uh, cutting board uh, and scoring board. In the little white tubs in this one are all of my paper crafting scissors and hole punches. In this one is extra lighting and then markers, especially markers for the Cricut. Uh, I needed a place to store all of those together and so that goes in there. All of these pink boxes all are, it's going to be very dark under there because it's under the desk. These are all paper crafting. So this is where I keep, uh, all of our subscription boxes come with um, like little books and magazines with them. So one tote is for those and for any like reading material that we get for our channel. One of them is all glue. One of them is all Cricut stuff. One of them is um, all like keepsake things that we get through our channel. So then if you come up to the top, we just have another bin under there that is for if something needs to be filmed, uh, it goes in that bin. So like we just got Creative Notions in yesterday and so that is in the bin waiting to be filmed. So um, pull that out. So these are all things that are waiting to be filmed. We've got Creative Notions, Leslie LaFleur, this is our uh, sow that we're getting ready to do for Leanne. Then, this is kind of new and random, uh, but this is just the mini fridge that we grabbed that's full of all of our favorite drinks. But because we do have guests that stay upstairs, uh, we try and put some of their favorite things in there. And then a little snack cord there, and I've got a stack of quilts at the bottom of that. Y'all are really about to see all our dirt. Okay, in this corner, this is going to be kind of hard to film. Okay, so in this corner, we have this rolling cart. This is essentially where all of our cross-stitch fabric is, threads, things like that that are not DMC. I have this turn style, and this is what I keep all of our overdies on. I can see that very soon, we are going to grow out of this. Uh, but I love this thing. And it, they were throwing it away at Meyer. It was a display thing, I think, for Jim Shore ornaments. And we snagged it, and I love it. So then in this roller cart, we got this at Joann's uh, for just a couple of bucks. This has, like, all of our threads. This is, like, DMC things. This is our linen stash, our Ada stash, which is much larger. And then these are finished pieces that are waiting to, I think, I think Pam and Steph call this an under-the-bed box. So these are all waiting to be finished completely, fully finished. Then this is Tech Guy's drawer, so his current whips that he's got. And you'll see, guys, he has uh, he has Wizard of Oz back because he didn't sign it, and she, my mom wants it signed. This is all FFO materials. So this is where I've got sticky board. I've got 
like picture frames and things I can use to fully finish things. These are the tart dishes that I'm going to use to finish those Lori Holt ornaments. And let's see this. I don't think. Oh, this is we have friends that come over every Friday night to stitch. So some of them choose to leave their cross stitch here because that's the only time that they they can come and stitch. So or they, that's the only time they have to stitch. Okay, so I just really quickly like want to talk about this corner over here. This corner is a lot. It holds our TV and like I always have a bolt of white fabric laying around. And so that's what essentially is in this corner. This is the second largest Kalex unit that you can buy from Ikea. And I bought all the bins to go in it. There are four, eight, 12, 16 of them in here. And this all has fabric. And they are either grouped by pre-cut size or they're just folded yardage. This is also in the bottom four of them. It's where I keep all of my ironing supplies is in one uh, project bags or in another one. And then if people send us things to give away on our channel, there is a box for that as well. And then all my scraps that are waiting to be cut up and put in my scrap bins have a bin as well. Other than that, this is all fabric. Okay, so we have shown you the Kalex and everything that it has to offer. Then as we back up here, this is just our seating area. And this is super nice for when I'm stitching or uh, sewing in here. Tech guy can sit down and be comfortable and stitch or play as Nintendo or anything. And then down below that table is my great grandmother's cathedral window. And I love it so much. It's absolutely beautiful. It's all hand stitched, hand quilted, everything. And I love it. So, and then those are a lot of patterns that she had sent off for um, hanging up there at the end. Um, and so they're all just old vintage, like newspaper patterns. And I love that. That board that is behind the couch is the board that we use to take pictures. So that's our backdrop. It's actually just a piece of wainscot that I've cut in half and use that. And I slide it out whenever I need to take pictures of quilts or cross stitch stuff or our unboxings. That is what I use for behind there. If we go over to the stairs, this shelf here, starting at the top, that is my very first sewing machine as an adult. Before that, I would just use my mom's sewing machine. Then uh, it's just a little singer and it's actually still works really well. I teach lessons on that. Then I've got my Cricut on that next shelf. Below that is my Husqvarna. And I would say that was one of my first uh, more expensive machines that I invested in. And I still really like it, um, especially if I'm doing zigzag stitching or uh, blanket stitching or anything like that. Below that, I have my serger. I've actually only used that maybe like twice because I really don't know how to use it. Uh, and I don't make clothes, so I don't really need to, to use it for that. Down below there uh, on the very bottom, we have an easy press, which is for the Cricut for making iron-on transfers and things like that. And then that turquoise kind of tin that you see there is full of all the cords and presser feet for all of the machines on that shelf. Then I have my Juki pressing, uh, I'm sorry, my Juki slide on adjustable table there. And then all those tubes, those are all vinyl and iron on for the Cricut. So when I want to make t-shirts or coffee cups or merchandise or gifts or whatever, then that's super easy to do that. Then I just have some decorations up there. That baby doll that you see at the top actually has an old disposable pampers on it. I took that baby doll with me when I was four years old to the hospital uh, when I took a big sister class and learned how to put a diaper on so I could help my mom when she had my sister. So it's just sentimental, so it sits up there. Now, over here on this wall, I have these huge design boards, and they are actually super tall, um, taller than I am. And I can put them together and make one giant wall. I had gone to Joanne's one afternoon. I had watched a couple videos to see how do people make design walls? I had such a large area to put a design wall up in my studio that I wanted to figure this out. And this actually migrated over from our other studio as well. So when I went to Joanne's and I was just looking at my options, I was talking to the framer there. She was like, well, what are you doing this for? You know, just being very inquisitive, trying to help. And she said, well, I have mounting foam that comes in huge uh, five foot sheets 
that I can sell you. So I got two five foot sheets for $15. And then I bought white fleece that goes over the top of them. And so then your blocks just adhere to them. Um, yeah, and then heavier quilts. I do pin in there just to kind of have something. That is a hand piece quilt, uh, just block from my great grandmother's sewing room, which you can tell a theme. Just some blocks from the, um, I told you all this room is well loved. That wall looks awful. Um, that is some blocks from tutorials that I have done. And then lastly, we come to this piece of furniture. I knew when I was designing this room that I wanted this piece of furniture in here because my grandmother, re or, sorry, my grandfather repurposed this. And when you lift this lid, actually has a board straight across that allows for you to use it for any sewing machine that you have, any domestic sewing machine. And so my Juki is a little bit too heavy. It made me a little too nervous to put it on there. So I threw this old sewing machine on here. This is an adorable um, gift I got in the StitchCon Smalls Exchange last year of a pattern that wasn't released yet. I have that sitting on top of an old Sears catalog. And then I have a really cute beehive, a uh, couple of decorations there and some knitting needles. And then this I needed to be functional. So I have six drawers in here. Tech guy's gonna pull those out for you. The top one is all my pins and binding clips and all of that. Then the next one is all cutting materials. So I've got snips and rotary cutters and uh, extra blades and seam rippers and things like that. Then each sewing machine that I have has its own drawer. So this is the sewing machine drawer for all the parts and pieces and accessories to the Singer sewing machine. We'll talk about that basket there at the bottom in just a second. Then this one here is all my writing utensils or marking tools. So I've got a bone folder there. I've got um, some other marking tools as well. I use those both in quilting and cross stitch. This one is the drawer for all the accessories and oil for my Juki. And y'all, I go through that oil like nobody's business because it is important to keep that machine well oiled. And then this last one is for my Husqvarna, which love that. It has all the pieces and parts. So that makes this like super functional. It's just fantastic to like have those drawers and be able to make them really useful. In this basket, this is the last thing we'll show you in our room. In this basket is all kitted projects for cross stitch. So if something is completely kitted like this one, this is a Brenda Gervais piece that I have the fabric ready to go. It's called Queen of the Needle. So it's got the fabric in there, the pattern, and all of the floss. And this is where Tech Guy and I will pull um, any new starts that we want to do or mania projects. So it just makes it really fun and it just sits on the bottom of that sewing machine down there and also makes that functional. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, this is me kind of standing right at the step up into our dining room and this is our quilt studio. Don't mind the heater because it is cold in here. But this is our quilt studio kind of at a far glance here. I'm all put together. And I know I will get questions about this. Those are our filming lights that we just have dangling from the ceiling, kind of secured up there. Um, the quilts are hung on the wall with uh, really inexpensive quilt rods and alligator clips from Ikea. The rod themselves, maybe like a $1.50, and I think the brackets are somewhere around the same price. And they're really easy to interchange. Uh, it's just very, very simple. Let me see if I can walk a little closer here. And you see they're just rings and alligator clips. So as I want to change those, I can, and it's not a whole huge bunch of work, and I don't damage the quilt at all. I may have to iron the alligator clip marks out of it, but it's not that bad. So, yeah, so that's our quilt space. And I don't know, it's just, I love the desks the way they are now. This wall is so long and it really opened this up to have our desks side by side and just be able to work closely together.
<laughs> it's done. It is done. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that is our studio. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, I almost forgot to show you the way I hang my quilts because I know I'll get a lot of questions on that. So right there at the end, you saw how I hang the quilts and that really inexpensive option for that. Um, or hang your cross stitching. Or you could hang your cross stitching. You before you FFO to kind of display it. That would mm -hmm. be nice as well. That's actually a really good idea. I might have to steal that. Yes. Um, so this room is a lot of how my brain works. Uh, it's laid out how my brain works because I spend 90% of my working time in here. Um, I have been stitching in the living room because it's a lot warmer in there. But uh, yeah, it's set up how how my brain would work for now. And I think, it, yeah, that's true. My style chain is changing right now. So where a lot of like my colors are very bright, vibrant and bright right now, I feel like that could change. And the quilts that are on the wall are so easy to change out on those alligator clips that it's totally fine if I make new ones and just switch them out. So, and I really like your idea of hanging the cross stitch. Boom. That's kind of nice. So, like I said, if you guys have questions or if you need me to explain something a little bit differently or how I organize one thing over another, leave them down below. And like I said, I love to continue the conversation and I love the dialogue that we can share because you can learn so much from other people and how other people do things. And so I learned my scrap storing method from Lori Holt and somebody might learn something different from me. I might learn something that works even better from someone else as far as fabric storage or floss storage or something like that. Which I'm interested in seeing what other people's floss storage are. I mean, yeah. everyone goes from hanging them up to mm -hmm. uh, plastic I would containers love, to- Or a lot of people have them on the rings. Yes. Like the big rings, which is really interesting. So yeah, this is a fun video to do because it was it's fun. different. And we have not done one in the year that we've been in this new studio. So that was really fun and exciting and fresh and, I don't know, just interesting. Something different, right? To do. I hope you guys enjoy uh, it as much as we making it. For yes. You. When we started this video, it was light outside. And when we're ending it, it's dark. Dark outside. And it's bedtime. Yes. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the hive today. We hope that you guys really enjoyed this uh, video. And it was something different and fun and exciting. So, all right. You guys have a great week.